Uh, my name is Mark Wong. I'm a consultant with Second Quadrant. I've been a contributor to the Postgres project uh, over the years. So I'm here to talk about how how one might want to use this test kit called dbt3. Um, so uh, uh, the primary um, person, people who I'm targeting here are, are folks who are looking to run some kind of uh, test or be a way, uh, people are looking for ways to evaluate whether it be their system uh, code changes and, and whatnot. So out of curiosity for, for those of you folks here, how, how many of you have ways to test your systems that you have or, or evaluate? So that's good. <laughs> oh. So um, this, this particular kit that I'm um, going to discuss is uh, kind of a specific workload. I'll get into that a little bit, so we'll, we'll see um, uh, how relevant it will end up being for you guys, how, how helpful it will be for you guys. But um, the kind of things that, that this particular test kit was designed to help do was to size hardware um, if you were a, a database developer. Uh, making code changes to the internals, having some way to see how, uh, how effective or, or to what kind of, of uh, impact your, your code changes may have. Um, if there were new features, new database features, perhaps uh, you want to see how effective it would be for, for this kind of workload. And then for um, DBAs looking for uh, trying to understand you know, what if I, what happens if I change the uh, value for uh, this parameter, uh, shared buffers or or the um, transaction log sizes and and whatnot. Uh, also, how how various operating system parameters may affect uh, uh, the performance of a system. So I'll go into a little bit of the background of, of where this kit came from and describe what this kit can do for you. Uh, it includes what this kit is capable of producing or, or what you might be able to um, extrapolate from it. And I'll offer some basic examples of, of uh, how you can actually run this kit. How many folks are familiar with the TPC? Um, the TPC is a, a little consortium of, of some system and storage hardware vendors and some database software companies. They came together to uh, establish a neutral environment so that they could compete with each other. A series of benchmarks have been published over the years, and and the one that is uh, that I'm going to go over in particular is the H. Uh, the H is a decision support benchmark that um, <clears throat> a decision support benchmark that defines a, a database schema for you, how to generate data and. Um, uh, gives you a template of queries to run against it. So, um, yeah, so in other words, it's, it's just a little guide of, of how to build your own little data warehouse and see how your database system runs on the hardware that you want to run it on. So the test is, this benchmark basically defines three tests, uh, load test, that where uh, you see how fast you can load the um, eight tables that are defined, create the indexes for those tables. The data generator that comes with the kit 
can produce anything from one gigabyte to tens of terabytes of, of data. Uh, so I'm curious, how many folks here are dealing with tens of terabytes of data? More, hundreds? How about just, just hundreds of gigabytes of data? Um, <clears throat> so then the next test is what is called a power test. It is a, um, how the power test is run is you have a series of, of 21 queries that are, um, you have a set of 21 queries that are supposed to be various types of reporting queries. I'll give some examples of those next. Uh, so the power test is, is just to measure how well you can churn through these 21 queries and uh, a couple of, of uh, refresh streams um, where the refresh stream is a, uh, a process of adding, loading new data to your data warehouse and removing old data. So, so trying to cover a couple of aspects. Uh, then, then there's this throughput test, which is measuring the processing capacity of your system. Uh, it's uh, effectively running multiple power tests at the same time, so it, it's uh, uh, stressing the system to see how many, uh, to measure a rate of how many queries you can, you can run over an hour. So to give you an idea of, of the complexity these queries are trying to address, uh, they're going to try to report on the amount of business that was billed, shipped, returned, suppliers to select to place an order for specific regions, give you a top 10 list of unshipped orders of the highest values. Try to evaluate how well the um, uh, order priority system is working with an assessment of customer satisfaction. Revenues uh, generated through local suppliers, quantities of, of revenue, um, or how much your revenue would increase if you were to eliminate discounts on your orders. And the values of, of goods shipped between um, uh, certain nations. Uh, are these queries, uh, are these types of questions familiar to folks? Are these type of questions that, that uh, um, you find in, or that you have your data warehouses for? Now, for, for those of you who are familiar with those TPC benchmarks, anyone ever had to run one themselves? <laughs> so so the, the point of the, uh, well, one of the purposes of the TPC is, is for, for the various hardware vendors and, and database vendors to compete with each other. But um, everyone here is a, a Postgres user or wants to be, right? So. What we have put together with this, what the um, purpose of this kit here is that it's not so that we can compete with each other, but more so that we have something that we can use to see how we can improve ourselves, whether it be uh, Postgres itself or whether it be uh, how well you, you can utilize the uh, system and, and tools that you have at hand. So, this uh, TBT3 kit is, is derived from the TPCH uh, benchmark specification. But um, uh, if, if you are familiar with, with what's involved in running an actual TPC benchmark, this kit doesn't help you do, help you with the auditing, doesn't uh, help you with the uh, uh, price performance evaluation. Um, not all aspects of the TPCH benchmark are strictly followed. 
there are things like, uh, uh, regardless of whether you think these are realistic things or not, but um, there are some aspects of the TPCH such that uh, or one, one example is the benchmark defines that you only can have primary key uh, indexes on primary keys. I don't know if that's necessarily realistic. Um, some of these queries are defined such that uh, uh, to prevent cheating, if you will, um, if you take a close look at some of these queries, they may not be written in the most optimal way, or maybe they were uh, written in a way to um, uh, prevent uh, database vendors from um, uh, using special uh, database special uh, features to to churn through this. So um, I, I think what I'm trying to get at is is uh, uh, there are a lot of nuances of this kit, but what or of, of the of the TPCH benchmark. But um, what's important is that we have uh, a kit that we can run. Um, we don't have to follow strictly to to benchmark specifications and and um, hopefully make the make a better use out of this test kit than you would have um, by running a, a uh, actual benchmark. But having said that, if for any reason anyone was interested in participating in a real full-blown TPC benchmark, there is absolutely no reason why you can't go um, get a TPC audit done and, and um, publish a actual uh, benchmark result. So before we get into some of the details of what this kit really does, I just wanted to present some examples of, of things that I've used it for in, in the uh, past few years. So uh, uh, how many folks are, are familiar with the, with the new to Postgres Brin indexes? Anyone, anyone making use of it? Anyone made use of it before trying it out? No, that's good, that's good. So, what, so when, when um, uh, Alvaro Herrera was developing this, I was helping with some of the testing to evaluate how uh, these um, helped show where these Brin indexes would show up. So what, what we did was we took one aspect of, of the of the test kit, which is um, a small part of the load test, really. What we wanted to show, well, what, what this graph is showing is uh, along the x-axis is the size of the table. And on the y-axis, given at that size, uh, how quickly can you load an additional um, eight gigabytes of data. So uh, I think I think, in other words, um, as the table is growing, we wanted to have an idea of what the maintenance overhead of, of a Brin index versus um, the traditional B tree indexes were. So um, in, in using this kit, which was designed to generate table sizes into the uh, multi-terabyte range, we just, we just arbitrarily picked, well, we'll just look over the first terabyte uh, or a load of a uh, table up to the first terabyte. And uh, what we shown, what we were able to show here on the bottom line is if you had a table with no indexes on, you know, this is kind of the um, uh, rate, the, uh, yeah, the rate of loading eight gigabyte chunks of data up to a terabyte. And, and um, uh, you can see the line is fairly flat. The line above it is showing the overhead of, of having one Brin index on a column. And uh, that, that overhead of having that, that index is, is pretty minimal. Um, we're, we're talking about uh, adding, I don't know, half a minute of time to loading a table without indexes. And um, the, the B tree, the maintenance overhead of that B tree index on the top line over there, uh, you can see there's there's a fairly significant difference of just having one B tree index on this table, and I think I think uh, eyeballing it, you can see as the table is growing, that overhead 
of maintaining that bee tree index is, is actually growing as the table gets larger. So, so being able to, to um, uh, use a part of this kit to measure that, to uh, uh, see, be able to do some kind of comparison with, with how this, these BRIN indexes um, may or may not actually help was, was a, a, a helpful thing to have. So this chart here is a, um, another uh, chart that we put together from data from running just the throughput test. Uh, what, what we were showing here, what we were able to show with this kit is a, uh, how well, um, I'll back up a little bit. The, the bottom line here, uh, or this, this chart is showing um, on the x-axis, uh, the number of streams, uh, number of this in the throughput test, uh, the number of, of power tests that you're running are, are referred to as streams. So, on the bottom, it's showing how many streams of the throughput test are running, and the y-axis is showing what the uh, well, what is called the metric for the throughput test, the numerical quantity. It, it's is just a um, uh, ratio to uh, show a measurement of how many queries are you're actually pumping out through uh, the throughput test. So um, that, this uh, bottom-ish shorter segment line is showing what the query output is uh, with Postgres 9.2 running from between, uh, well, uh, yeah, running with measurements between 10 and, and 22, 24 streams. And with, with 9.2 uh, on a um, four socket system, I'll, I'll point out in a minute why, uh, uh, why I'm pointing out this four socket part. Um, but it looked like the, the query output peaked at around um, running 12, 14 streams against well, with 9.2. So uh, with, with this particular type of, of decision support and workload, churning through reporting queries, uh, trying to run more than, than 12, 14 queries at a time, um, you, start, you start hitting a wall or, or start uh, hurting yourself uh, with the query performance. So now this, this other line that's, that's going above and, and over it, which is a little more jagged, is uh, taken during the 9.5 development cycle, a uh, number of patches developed by uh, folks like Andres Freund and Robert Haas to improve the scalability and um, various performance aspects, some of which were actually committed to 9.5 and some um, actually were not. But uh, with all these patches thrown in in 9.5, it helped give a measure to them of, of what uh, the impact of, of the code changes that they were working on. Uh, with scalability, so in this, in this very specific decision support workload, we were able to show that um, not only were we able to increase the query output with this type of workload, um, we were also able to to uh, uh, increase the um, peak output, at you will, w at about 2022, 20, uh, around 20 um, concurrent reporting streams running at a time instead of 12. Uh, another thing, uh, another uh, way that this kit, kit was used was um, also comparing things like, or evaluating things like Postgres XL. Any, any XL users or XC? Anyone thinking about it? Or it doesn't have to be Excel. Anyone thinking about this kind of uh, MPP style stuff anyway to use with Postgres? So the, this, um, so these particular type of queries, and and I, I'll try not to go into the uh, specifics. That you, you can see on this chart here, uh, along the x-axis, is showing the individual queries and the refresh streams. Uh, queries are are uh, uh, easily named one through 21 and, and uh, uh, two refresh streams. So uh, along the y-axis is showing the response times 
for these particular queries. Um, what we wanted to compare here with Excel, and I think this is the nine. This was during the very beginning of the 9.6 development cycle, so this is almost effectively um, a 9.5 release. Um, we had, we took uh, two sets of systems. Uh, the one, a largish single system to run uh, 9.6 on to, to see where it was at and in um, how it was able to run this particular workload, uh, shown in the blue bars, bluish bars on the left. And we built a, I can't uh, actually remember right now, it was either an eight or 16 node cluster Excel system, such that the total memory between all the nodes and the total storage was, was uh, equivalent to the single system uh, that we ran 9.6 on, um, same number of processors, same type of processors. So kind of using that as a, as a um, uh, gauge to just, just see how um, having the total number of, well, equivalent hardware resources, if you will. And um, almost across the board, you can see a couple of these queries don't necessarily run that much faster with Excel, but um, uh, being able to run a test like this, we're able to see what type of queries actually were able to have a, a take a huge, um, uh, were able to make a huge improvement on, sorry, uh, which of these queries were able to take advantage of a system like Excel having, having data distributed and whatnot. And then by being able to see these, we, we could um, trace these back. Th these queries are, are, um, are pretty, uh, I don't think static is the right word I'm looking for. I mean, there, there are templates for each of these queries, so, so we can look at the types of the queries and see which ones that are obviously, can take uh, a huge benefit from, from um, this kind of architecture and which ones don't, and, and uh, uh, take that information to see what might need work, might, what might not, and what may or may not um, really make a difference whether you have an MPP style distributed database. So aside from, from uh, the nicer graphics, some of the things that have been done over the years were just to see, well, uh, I have this system, can I really load data this fast? Um, some, uh, some uh, testing has been done to evaluate just operating system type parameters. Uh, is which of these new Linux I.O. elevators will work better for a workload of this type? Um, do these XFS mount options actually make a difference in, in um, running all these reporting queries off of a table in this partition? Um, and I think I mentioned some of these, uh, some of the other ones a little earlier, is, is really allocating eight gigabytes versus 12 or 20 to shared buffer is really gonna make an impact on some of these queries if, if my data set size are in the um, terabyte, hundreds of gigabytes and whatnot. Uh, and then I think, yeah, Brin indexes. Uh, the earlier example I showed was just just kind of a, a individual use of, of well, I individual as in we just wanted to see the impact of one query, but then uh, with with some of these other reporting queries, what if I replaced all my B tree indexes and we can we can actually get a more realistic measure of of uh, of the practical impact of what a Brin index might do for for a set of reporting queries. And then also with all the new fancy parallel query plan execution, I'm sure everyone, how many people have been playing with the parallel query stuff? <laughs> so, so then uh, as, as more work goes into that, um, I, think, I think some of these queries will, may, um, well, will be able to show some benefit of, of having um, 
uh, parallel query plan execution. And so I'll get, start to go into a little bit more about what the actual raw, well, uh, uh, what the actual output and, and data that this kit will actually uh, give you so that you can do those kind of comparisons, analysis, evaluations, and, and so forth. Um, the benchmark actually defines a, a small set of, of metrics. So um, I'll skip the composite for now, but the load time is fairly straightforward. You just want to know how long it takes to, to load these eight tables. And um, what the, how this kit does it out of the box, it basically tries to load all eight tables in, in parallel and then start building indexes on them afterwards. Uh, so that's certainly no reason why you can't go into the scripts and, and change that in case uh, for whatever reason you uh, um, want to see them run uh, or to, to change that process a little bit, whether you only want to load a couple of tables at a time in parallel or, or um, uh, change the number of indexes that are being created. The query processing power is a geometric mean of the uh, the, this comes from the power test, and it's a geometric mean of the response times from the individual queries and, and refresh streams. So um, I think as, as you can see on one of the previous charts, the response times are, can vary wide, wildly from seconds to tens of seconds to minutes. And if, if you start playing with this in the terabyte range, you might start looking at query times in, in hours, but um, this is the Geometric mean is, is a way to kind of normalize the response times to get a comparable result, just a simple comparable metric to, um, to look at. Uh, similarly, with the numerical quantity calculation from the throughput test, it's, it's just simply a ratio of the number of queries to what the um, total time it took to, to churn through all those queries. So then going back up to the composite score, the composite score is just another um, uh, ratio or normalization of, of the query processing power and the numerical throughput to, to give you that one metric. I, I think it depends on how detailed uh, you want to make use of the results coming from, from this test kit, whether you just need that one. Yes? Uh, yeah, right. So, so it, it, it depends on how um, detailed you want to get into how you use this kit. So, for example, um, these are uh, the query processing processing power is unit unitless. Um, the uh, I think I think both of those are unitless. But then in the calculations for generating the composite, it's supposed to represent a query per hour metric. So um, uh, I can't think of the right word. It's, it's not, I think saying that they're made up is too strong, but they're, they're kind of, uh, um, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't think of the right word to, to describe it, but, but uh, yeah, so, so um, as I was trying to say, the, it depends on how detailed you want to get. Uh, so for example, maybe one, uh, one person may really only care about one type of query, so they, they only look at, at the one query. Some people may look at this and say, yeah, I, I do want to have a, a feel for the whole test as a whole, and then you can just simply run your series of tests and, and compare some of these very general metrics. Uh, so then to kind of continue that, to drill down, if you were interested in only a few sets of these queries, um, you, you could actually run, run this kit in a way so that, that uh, you don't need to run the whole test. I don't care about these 21 queries. I really only care about these four. And so you can either just run them individually, run the test as, as um, uh, scripted by default. Uh, and and uh, uh, 
the kit will present these response times out for you, and you can you can see um, uh, well, yeah, see them individual or as a whole. So so uh, this representation here is showing both the results of each of the queries from the power and the throughput test together. So the power test is running the queries individually, and, and the results from the throughput test are an average of however many streams that you have running of what the results are. So now, uh, out of curiosity, how, how many folks here are, are um, uh, developers who are who are going in there to make changes to Postgres and Oh yeah, yeah. Hi. I guess however you want to look at it. <laughs> or or how about um, uh, systems folks? How many how many of you guys are actually looking at at hardware details and make sure you're you're buying the right kind of stuff to use? So so where the DBT three kit um, goes above and beyond, if you will, for what the benchmark specification calls for, is. It's collecting um, some of these things. It'll chart for you, so, uh, but it certainly collects a lot of raw data for you. Uh, processor utilization, whether it's aggregate, uh, both aggregated or individual for the logical physical processors that you have. It'll grab data from the block devices. Uh, in addition to reads and writes, I IOPS, it'll grab all some of these more esoteric things, depending on how useful that you find them. The average queue sizes, request size, wait times, um, even give you that generic uh, device utilization. Some of the other things that it'll collect from the proce uh, processor stats, uh, you can start looking at your context switches, uh, memory utilization, virtual memory. <clears throat> And because this is using SAR under the covers, it'll even save the network statistics if, if uh, uh, that happened to be interesting in one way or the other, which, which it does in um, tests where we're running things like, like Postgres XL, where when you do have different nodes and data traveling between them. Um, in addition to SAR, the other, the other tool that it uses to collect raw data is PID stat, so you can also start looking at I.O. and processor and memory utilization per processor instead of uh, at a, at a system-wide level. Um, I just wanted to show a colorful graph. This is um, one of the things that will chart for you in R. How many R users? No? No? One? Oh, I, I like R. That's why I like showing these charts. Um, so uh, this is just the processor utilization from a load test. Uh, you, you can see a couple of processors spike up, and just because I'm somewhat familiar with these tests, uh, um, those couple of arches in the middle and towards the end, I know it's because of one particular table that is very large, so it's just churning through loading in one table and then a couple of indexes over there. So, um, And then a lot of noise at the bottom, but... but uh, I like the colors. So um, in addition to all those system stats, this kit will also try to gather a lot of the database statistics that are provided by Postgres. How many people look at these, at these tables on a regular basis? So folks, are, some of you guys are fairly familiar with these guys, or intimately familiar. Uh, it'll certainly grab uh, the majority of these, such as the number of connections, um, transactions that are actually committed, uh, rolled back. The um, blocks hit, missed, and shared buffers, uh, database-wide, per table. Um, all those other interesting stats, such as how many uh, uh, table scans are being done, index scans, um, toast table hits and misses. And uh, um, it'll the kit actually plots all, uh, charts all of these per table. Uh, some of these might get um, a little tedious to have all that data, but, but um, it all is there and, and available. 
So the other, the other additional data that this will get for in addition to those uh, table and index stats are the uh, query plans. So the um, the test kit uses templates to generate queries, um, the parts that are are uh, that vary between test run are things like um, if you were making a query between um, orders between a certain date, and every time you run the test, it's going to pick a different set of dates to run through. But uh, the test will save the the actual queries that were executed, and at the same time, it'll take a explain plan and save that, so you can. Um, you can have a look to see what how the planner is actually performing or, or what the planner is actually doing. Uh, you can optionally choose to run and explain analyze, which will save the actual execution of the queries and the buffer statistics. And if you did do that, um, how, how many folks have to have dealt with plan disasters? Any are folks familiar with the, with that? So so basically, uh, a plan disaster is uh, if you were to just ask the um, ask Postgres, you know, well, tell me what you think you'll do, you see what it does, and then you say, well, uh, okay, so run this query, tell me what you actually did. Uh, what is called a disaster is if the um, expected plan grossly varies from the actual plan. So a specific example, um, you're, you're joining two tables, you have some conditions. Planner says, oh yeah, yeah, this, this table over here, you should probably only get 100 rows out of this table to join with, um, I think, 1,000 rows out of this table. You run the actual query and you realize, oh, it's joining uh, 10 rows against 2 million. I wonder what happened there. So, so uh, uh, certain types of queries, um, well, you know, planner makes mistakes. You want to see uh, where those might be. Maybe uh, feed it back to the uh, Postgres mailing list and, and see if uh, uh, you can figure out where you might have made a mistake in setting parameters or whether uh, help identify what Postgres could do better to help um, avoid these disasters. So uh, another, another um, aspect of what this kit can help in uh, uh, testing. How many people like profiling and system profiling? <laughs> so here, here's, here's, this aspect is probably uh, more targeted towards uh, those of you who, who get down into the code or doing some coding yourself to see what, what's going on um, very deep below the scenes. So uh, an option of this kit is to collect profile data for you. Um, probably most interesting here is, is the power and the throughput test. Uh, how, what the kit will actually do for you is, well, in the power test, you're running, it, you're running the queries, or the kit's running the queries one at a time. So uh, it's pretty trivial to be able to get a profile of what a query is actually doing without worrying about what else is running on the system. So uh, if there was a particular type of query that you were most concerned about and, and what it was actually doing, um, this kit will, will grab the profile data for that entire execution of a particular query. Throughput test is a little more, a little more um, noisy, complicated, uh, with multiple streams running multiple queries at the same time. Um, you, uh, have the kit designed to just grab the profile data of, of the entire uh, throughput test. So for um, our entertainment, I just want to show a couple of examples of what, of what some of these uh, Linux perf profiles look like. So this is one of the reports of coming from query 18. Um, for those of you who dig down deep into the code in this particular instance. Uh, this, this query was looking like it was spending 16% of its time um, doing a bucket hash scan. Please correct me if I'm 
uh, pointing out the wrong parts of the code here, but uh, uh, you can see that this call graph is, is showing where, um, how it's getting into there and, and uh, um, yeah, again, depending on how deep you want to get into the code, uh, this kit provides some pretty low level details for you. But then if you actually like to see the, the code annotated, um, this kit will certainly generate that data for you, same query showing you the, the uh, code from the um, node hash.c file, what line, a um, couple of, of uh, uh, assembly calls in there. So um, before I get into the real simple examples, that, that was, that was uh, um, kind of the high level tour, tour of, of all the data that this kit will collect for you. Um, does anyone have any questions? All right. So, um, now, how, I didn't ask this earlier. How, uh, are people actually familiar with this particular test kit? Heard of it before? So, uh, good opportunity to get familiar with it. Uh, there, it is um, hosted on SourceForge uh, right now. Uh, use Git to grab a copy of it. Um, do you have to run a, a, do you have to configure it to use with Postgres? This kit actually runs against multiple databases. Uh, if, if you wanted to run it against MySQL or MariaDB, um, you have to make sure that the data generator is built for the right system that you're gonna use it for. So we wanna make sure that it's built to generate data for Postgres. Uh, it is, this, this kit is really composed of, of um, a couple of C programs that generate data and, and to generate the queries for you. But otherwise, the rest of it is a huge pile of shell scripts that it will install into your path. Um, I know over the years that this particular test kit and I'll tell you off the bat since it sounds like uh, not very many of you have tried using it before, but uh, this, these test kits are uh, not really the easiest things to use, and I want to point out some of the things that you might want to be aware of before you uh, dive in too far and um, uh, get too discouraged by the, uh, how much um, manual labor it might take to get a test going. But uh, this this test kit involves setting up and uh, uh, setting up uh, your shell environment to point out where you want your data files generated, uh, where the templates for the queries are, um, where the actual uh, binaries are that are built in this kit. Um, doesn't really have the uh, most friendly uh, installation stuff going for it. And then some basic Postgres stuff like what database you want this thing to actually load up into, and and um, uh, where you want to where you want this database instance created. So uh, this the the main script to run here it's called dbt3 run workload. Uh, this is really only a handful of options of what you want to do, but um, again, since this was sort of daunting, I, I wanted to focus on, to just point out some of the uh, minimal flags that, that you should be able to control, or that I think would be useful place to start and, and getting going with this if you find a use for it. But, so you, you need to specify what database um, you're running against so it knows what what uh, uh, scripts, templates to use. Um, you do get to specify the scale factor of how much data you want it to load, whether it be in the single gigabytes up to the tens of terabytes. You want to save your results. Uh, so you can specify where to save your results. And uh, the number of throughput streams to run. Um, you, you do get to specify whether it be two streams, four streams, 20 streams. Uh, whether you wanted to collect Linux 
the Linux perf profiling data. Uh, another set of parameters that you may want to specify. Um, and the, the importance here for being able to specify different set of database parameters for the load, power, and throughput test is um, uh, how, many, how many folks do change parameters depending on what they're doing for the system. For example, if you're uh, loading data or creating indexes, folks um, are in the habit of modifying what, what the maintenance workmen might be or what workmen might be, whether you're running queries and whatnot. So the, these, these are, are um, supposed to help facilitate those kind of, of uh, that mentality that there is no one set of parameters that, that you want to use for everything that you do. Um, depending on what you do, you want to make sure that, that you use um, an optimal set of, of settings. And um, uh, another thing that I think is important to point out is you can specify a random, uh, the random number generator seed, so you can have some repeatable tests and you're not wondering if, if uh, uh, such widely varying settings is giving you widely varying results. Now, the um, primary reason for all these various parameters is that this kit was intended to, or intended to, it, uh, folks liked being able to script running a series of tests. So knowing that you can set all of these on the command line, you could, you could run, uh, slap together a wrapper script to go through and say, yeah, well, let's see what happens when I keep changing the shared buffers from one gigabyte increments between a set of ranges or um, uh, from one of the earlier charts that I showed, you could keep running through and, and change the number of throughput streams just to see how the um, end results look as, as you increase the uh, number of, of uh, uh, query streams running, churning through the system. So with that, a uh, couple of notes that are also kind of worth m mentioning as if you start diving into making use of this kit is, is um, yeah, I mentioned that first one just now, that, that uh, this kit was kind of designed to be used uh, in a way that you could batch up a series of tests, let it run, and then go through the results after the fact. Um, the tests can also be run individually. Maybe you only care about how fast you can load the systems. Maybe, maybe uh, these particular queries don't don't interest you at all. You just you just want to know if if um, you can load 200 terabytes of data within a few days or whatnot. Uh, or maybe you don't care so much about the throughput test and you just want to run through the power test and so forth. So, so there is some flexibility in how you you can run this kit. Uh, and then, um, although uh, depending on whether you only care about the throughput or power test, you got to make sure you load your data. <laughs> but you only have to do that once. So that's what I had for you guys. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, are there any questions? Well, it's been on and off over the years. Um, I think the first time that it was put together by a colleague of mine was in the early 2000s. And um, I do say with this particular kit, th this decision support workload, I think, I think the developments in Postgres in the past five years have been more um, relevant. Uh, this kit has been better suited for helping uh, test rather than the five years before that, the kind of changes that were going in the Postgres before that. Um, oh, sorry, were you asking if I could make a... Oh. Um, I think... Well, if I were to oversimplify it, I think PG Bench is more of a simple harness. Um, I do think it can, there are some aspects that, that could be similar. I mean, you could define uh, queries that PG Bench could churn through. Um, 
I'm not sure if P2 Bench could do the data loading in the same way, but, but uh, uh, I think for the most part, there's only a little bit of overlap that, that you could use. So certainly, um, uh, if your needs didn't need, if you didn't need something quite as extravagant and as what this kit would do for you in terms of all the data it would do, the complexity of the workload, um, PG Bench would certainly could certainly be a, a more useful tool. Uh, there, there's a couple other kits that are out there. Um, DBT2 is based off the TPCC, which is a simpler OLTP type workload. Um, there is a more complicated one that I think is number five, DBT5, that's based off a TPCE. Um, and then um, PG Bench also is, is a very simple TPCB implementation. So, so there's a few more options for OLTP type workloads. I don't. I don't think it. It. Um, no one that I know specifically. Um, I. I know. Oh, I, I take that back. I. Know, I know some. Oh, I'm drawing a blank on names. Um, the folks who were working on the the serialization stuff. I know they were using it a little bit. Um, when they were redoing the serializable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. So yeah. Uh, but not. Probably not as. As. Um, that particular one, I don't know of very many, many uh, cases of, of being in wide use. Hmm. Any other questions? All right, thanks guys.